hello developers how you all guys doing today i want to show you a pretty good thing which i learned with python decorators that you can use if you come across any use case where you had to write a decorator which will handle synchronous and also asynchronous functions so no matter what function you are wrapping synchronous or asynchronous it's going to handle that okay so if you jump into the code here I have a basic timer decorator which is basically trying to time the function which you wrap with it. Here we have the decorator itself uh, taking in the function and all the arguments just to generalize for every function that you wrap with this decorator and it has a start variable which stores the start time using the time module python time module and then runs the function stores the output in a variable and then stores the end time and the time taken will be calculated based on difference between end and start times and then it shall it just uh, prints out a message uh, that the function has taken these many seconds okay that's awesome so let me just run that and show you what it is doing so here you can see that uh, the function name waiter which I wrapped here and ran it for one second so the seconds to wait is one hence the waiter has waited for one second okay so now I want to write an asynchronous function as well this is my asynchronous variant of the waiter function uh, which is just using the asyncio.sleep method to sleep but unfortunately our timer decorator doesn't work because it is just not written for uh, asynchronous functions it's just written for asynchronous function okay <laughs> so now to tackle that uh, what we can do is uh, a very you know unclean way of writing another wrapper function which is just like this okay uh, an asynchronous variation of the wrapper Okay, it just uh, is awaiting the function uh, in case the function is uh, a coroutine instead of an actual synchronous function and while returning the wrapper you need to choose which wrapper to return so if you wanna uh, if you get a synchronous function then you need to return the synchronous wrapper if you get an asynchronous function you have to return an asynchronous wrapper so for that uh, we have asyncio dot coroutine function this will check if the function is synchronous or asynchronous so based on that I'm going to return the asynchronous and synchronous variations of the wrapper but it works fine and all uh, let me also uh, wrap this one uh, this already wrapped and let me also call the asynchronous uh, variation of the function like this here as it's an async function uh, you need to run it with async io which i have done here let's not wait for five seconds and just let's wait for two seconds so if i run that you can see that our synchronous waiter has waited for one second and async waiter has waited for two seconds so it's handling both synchronous and asynchronous cases but if you look at the wrapper code it's not clean it's bad because it is having redundancy so you see the same thing uh, here and also here so to handle that what I did is uh, I wrapped the complete uh, decorator logic inside a context manager so let me just import context manager from python context lib and then inside my decorator first I would like to have a context manager which will contain all my logic to time my functions uh, timing let me just call it timing context for lack of a better name so here I'm gonna have my logic to start and also mark the end time and 
calculate the time taken and print the outputs. So where is the function actually being called? So that's here. Uh, the magic happens when I put yield. Sorry, I couldn't spell yield. Yeah. So with this context manager, uh, I'm gonna remove the logic from here and here. And I'm going to directly return uh, the function. Actually, before returning, let me just uh, call the context manager with timing context and then return the function. Okay, so now what is this doing? So, when uh, the with timing context is called, uh, our function uh, that we have written here will be invoked and then this line will be executed and once it sees the yield it's going to run what's inside the context manager so our actual function will be uh, returned and then uh, the rest of the context manager will be run so uh, this is same as uh, before uh, in terms of logic but it has been cleaned i'm going to do the same thing for uh, the async version also i'm going to remove all the unnecessary things and I'm gonna directly return await of course by adding the context manager okay that cleans things up so now I'm gonna need to choose which uh, async uh, manager to return uh, I mean which wrapper to return which I already am doing here so this all should be working fine now Let, let's just test that so we see the waiter waited for one second and the async waiter waited for two seconds that's all for this video guys i hope you enjoyed it and learned something from it if you did make sure you like and subscribe to the channel to not miss amazing content like this i'll see you in the next one bye bye guys